Well, I think it is probably uh, quite lucky for Schalke that they are the 11 o'clock match out here because while it is a, a U.S. Open semifinal and there are quite a few people here, it is nothing like the cauldron that it is at night. And Pete Sampras feeds off of the intensity that he gets from a night crowd here. And uh, I am certain that Shulkin would really struggle in that environment. Today, he'll be able to, to relax a bit more. But of course, it won't matter how relaxed he is if Sampras keeps coming up with shots like that. <laughs> Look at this stretch backhand volley. A pretty good pass. What an angle. Still break point for Sampras. Shulkin doing a good job on the overhead. He was looking up into the bright sky. And really, with Shulkin hitting his first serve at 98, 103, 93 miles an hour, I don't see why Sampras doesn't choose to just to chip it and come in on the first ball. That forehand finds the line. And just on a technical level, I feel like Sampras produces more consistently off the forehand when he gets his weight forward. And you can see he was leaning on that ball. I just feel like when he gets his front foot down, he's more effective. Against some players, you, can, you almost know that he's going to serve in this place at a big moment. It's not the case with Sampras. Shulkin making Sampras play some volleys now. That's the play. Aggressive returning. And he backed it up with an aggressive approach. And that served really an invitation to take a swing at it and create something good. At 92 miles an hour into Sampras' forehand, just not good enough. That's great tennis. Certainly is very stylish tennis from Sampras. The approach perhaps just not quite deep enough. That was no easy shot for Schalke.
Well, no questions about why Shalkin is here. Beautiful ground strokes. Strong with length. He doesn't give you much in the rallies to attack. Sampras gets a break on the net court. And Schalken growing in confidence, even stretching back to Wimbledon where he had such a great match against Leighton Hewitt. Pete likes to play from the back of the court. He, he's a very patient guy. It's almost like he conserves his energy for the big situations. Rock solid off the backhand. And this is not an easy shot. And a pretty good volley. He just stays down so beautifully over that backhand. Look at that dramatic grip change as well. And look at his upper body. Just doesn't move at all. So stable. Much like the Sampras backhand volley. Yeah, that's textbook stuff right there. Well, Schalken guessed right on the forehand. Took it early. And you can see he can snap that return. I just sent it right back where it came from. As long as you get it at the in Russian service feet, you're in good shape. Well, this is as close as Shalkin has gotten on the Sampras serve. Still game point for Sampras. I think that serve out wide takes away the chip and charge tactic from Sampras. The crowd appreciative of his efforts. Rick Fox on the left joining the Sampras box. And Sampras opting to come in behind every short forehand that comes his way. That is a golden ticket to the net for him. Now Shulkin sets up his office five feet behind the baseline and dishes out some very solid ground strokes. His natural game from along the baseline. See, Sampras not at all impressed by that non-call. Javier Moreno on the chair is not going to overrule that one. Very close along the baseline. Well, I can see why he wasn't impressed. That ball just a little bit long. Linesmen get nervous too. That's the forehand he likes. And that time he gets it done. Again, leaning on that ball. That has been an important serve for Schalke, the one out wide. 
to earn him a number of points outright. And Sampras, one of those players who likes to cheat over to his backhand corner. And Schalken able to take advantage of this. You can see Sampras edging towards the other corner, hoping to hit a forehand. Oh, oh, two beautiful backhand winners into the Sampras forehand. I'm not sure which part of his backhand I like best, but the finish is absolutely beautiful, the way he extends that follow-through. Sampras on the board in the tiebreaker. Well, perhaps Pete was just hoping the crowd would get into the match. Let's get it to a tiebreaker and wake him up. Sampras constructing a beautiful point there. Yes, there he is in his favored backhand corner. Can be devastating from there with that forehand. Well, if you're Sampras, do you begin to lean over to that forehand to take away that wide one? Took that one out of Leighton Hewitt's book, did he? Don't recall Pete employing that, come on, too many times. So Schalken on the board. Due to Sampras's largesse. Another fine rally. And you can f sense that Schalken is turning up the heat a little bit. He's going for more off the baseline. And I think Sampras likes that pace. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, think of all the great matches he's had with Agassi over the years. Five straight points for the Dutchman. Yeah, perhaps a slight miss hit, but perfectly placed.
Great length off the Sampras backhand. So Sampras steadies at just the right moment. Shalkin just not quite a half volley. In between shot. That counts. 117 mile an hour second serve. Does he have confidence in his serve? I think he just might. That volley off the frame. He was he meant to go that direction. But cut it quite close. Sampras has done it. So the American takes the first step here today. He's got the opening set, 7-6. As the forehand from Sampras big enough that it forced the air from Shalkin and eight points to six in that first set tie break. Certainly a nervous time there as Shalkin won five straight points. Well, Pete has really sensed uh, and learned, particularly in this tournament, that it's going to help him if he lets the crowd get behind him and embraces and acknowledges them like he did that first set. That's going to pump him up and uh, perhaps let him get off to a quick start here in the second set, to make things a little bit easier for himself. It was a very tough first set. Shalkin played extremely well. Now this is something Pete Sampras has not done well all year long, John, that I think it, uh, it's nice to see back. Um, when he started losing a step, or, a step or two, he started just sort of pretty much playing from the middle of the court. And now he's not doing that. He's cheating all the way over and making, up, making forehands for himself. All right, thanks, Pam. Obviously, Bridget, a little uncomfortable being interviewed with play continuing. Well, an opening again for Sampras, low 30. No breaks of service yet. Which made the tiebreak all the more <laughs> incredible that they were losing points left and right, both men. There it is. Goes wide. Four aces now for Shulkin. It certainly helps that he's 6-3. That angle a little bit easier to pull off. He's had phenomenal success so far with that serve. Wouldn't you think Pete would almost dare him to go up the middle, get over that, farther? That, that's what I would have thought he would have done by now. But. Gonzalez had a hell of a time trying to figure out what to do with the return. He'd go for a winner. He'd just push it. He's, Pete's struggling a bit himself, a little unsure. So from love 30 to 30 all. It would seem there would make sense to put some pressure on Shock and attack him, force him to come up, come up with an early passing shot and let it, instead of letting Shang dictate play. Shock and playing that point well inside the baseline. creating a forehand for himself to end that rally. And earn a break point. That was very well earned because he had to work hard out there to get this opportunity. And Shang was moving him around and finally here was his chance. And 
That is an excellent play when someone's run a lot in a point is to go back behind your opponent. First chance against serve since the second game of the match. Just missed. <laughs> Boy, that was a tough backhand. So much for that plan. It was a good, deep, and low slice uh, attack. That's going to happen against a guy who hits uh, backhands that well. That's seven winners for him. I think he's. Less effective on that forehand side. You just there, you just have to tip your hat to him. That's too good. That's a big point for him to pull that out. So four on his serves. Sampras is 0 of 4 on his break point chances. He's had looks, that's for sure. Oh, what? Ken Rosewell at his best. Shocking with the slice backhand winner up the line. CBS Sports coverage of the U.S. Open continues after this word from your local station. In 1994 was the U.S. Open Juniors champion just uh, before his 18th birthday. pointed it out earlier when they get to backhand against backhand exchanges that's to Shulkin's side but when they go forehand to forehand then Pete has the edge. Well Pete can flatten it out and hit it with more pace. Shulkin is consistent on that side but is more more error prone. He couldn't convert down the line. And I suppose there's a reason for that, in that Yvonne Lendl was Shang Shalkin's great hero growing up as a kid, wasn't he? Well, you saw so many matches between Lendl and John McEnroe. McEnroe tried to play the same strategy Sampras is today. Trying to get to the net. Well, yes, I think he would try a, a bit more aggressively to get to the net than Sampras is today. Sampras quite content to rally from the back of the court on a number of occasions. McEnroe was in like a shot. But McEnroe didn't have Sampras's ability to generate pace from the back of the court either. I'm not sure you, how you would describe that forehand, but huge might fall into the list. I think it's a good call. I wouldn't want to have to make it though. <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, I would think that a part of the ball touched the line there. Yes. And remember, that has nothing to do with me being an American. I just feel that when that ball hits the court, it compresses and an edge is going to catch that line there. Okay. 
Well, Sampras taking advantage of the short serve. What a brilliant stretch volley. A ballet dancer there. He's got it. Sampras, two sets to love. Trudging through the ends. Something that we rarely saw from Sampras earlier in his career. The linesman called the ball out belatedly. Oh, and I think she was correct. The umpire has overruled incorrectly. We never would have seen re Sampras react like that three or four years ago, would we, Leif? No, I, I don't think so. Certainly not with such vituperative remarks. I mean, this is uncharacteristic in some ways. Well, that is one way to right the ship. Quickest serve of the day, 133 miles an hour. Do you think that call had anything to do with why that no, was? No, nothing <laughs> at all. <laughs> now some great defense from Schalken. And he's going to have to deliver that kind of tennis if he's going to find a way to get through the Sampras serve. He's got to capitalize every time he has a pass. Well, another double fault. And the first break point of the day for Shang Shalkin. That was remarkable, wasn't it? We almost had the exact same situation happening. And apparently the lines person actually did call the ball good, and the umpire confirmed her call. It was not an overrule. Sampras just a little late to react to the floating ball. Yes, and quite a hesitant volley here.
<laughs> Sampras with emphasis there. And I couldn't believe he hit that one right back to Shalkin. Plenty of room cross court. Well, no doubt thought that Shalkin would be heading towards the open court. And we all know that feeling as a tennis player. Chance is lost. And if you've played Pete Sampras, you know that feeling as well. And again, that serve that he delivers, the exact same location of the toss, shows you the same shoulder, and with the same look, he can go down the middle. So deception, a big part of the Sampras serve. So Schalken, a couple of break points, unable to convert. There's got to be another serve and volley, isn't there? Well, Max Mirny. Max Mirny, yeah. Federer from time to time. Federer from time to time. There aren't many of them out there. Oh, that's genius. A half volley winner. And Sampras edges ahead here in the third set, 2-1. Well, Shang Shalkin delivering his best U.S. a rhythm we haven't seen from Sampras many times today. Real authority on that forehand drive. Sampras delivers his best chip in charge of the day. And it's earned him the first break of the match. Do you think this match means anything to him, Leaf? 11 o'clock or not, he's pumped. And Pete that brought him alive again. Three of those matches, Pete Sampras played exquisite tennis. In fact, New Yorkers are still talking about his quarterfinal win over Agassi as perhaps one of the greatest matches in U.S. Open history. Now that's something special. Shalkin has shown me a lot when he's on the run today. When he's been in trouble, he's come up with some good stuff. And that was a beautiful forehand from a defensive position. 
Yeah, the awkward nature of his serve leads you to believe that he's he's not a great athlete. But I think that is not the case. Excellent balance around the court. After two hours and 22 minutes, Sampras has his first match point. He's got it. Sampras gets through against the very game. Shang Shalkin, 7-6, 7-6, 6-2. Sampras into the final.